Dann erzählt ihm er in einer Nacht plötzlich. Then one evening he suddenly told me everything he would eventually do, that thousands of people would come to him, that he would heal, that scientists would come. And then I started to have my doubts. Da bin ich losgelaufen und habe Boxsprünge gemacht. Then I started walking and jumped for joy, as they used to say. And I repeated, I'm healed, I'm healed. Und habe dann... Then I tried to straighten my arm, which had been like that for years. And it became straight. Und er wurde gerade. And then I could only yell, I can move it, I can move it. Er lässt sich bewegen, er lässt sich bewegen. Then he said again, spreading his arms, Stand up, you lame, you can walk. And then they stood up. I was stunned when I saw that, and wasn't the only one with tears in my eyes. When you've seen people stand up like that, when Gröning spoke to them, or when he just stood there, or when he said, Stand up now, and the people stood up, or when people with crutches threw them away and walked without them, then you can't look at such a person as a charlatan anymore. Ja, charlatan. Als Dankeschön habe ich ihn. To thank him, I laid out some provisions, something for him to eat. He got sacks and sacks of mail every day. They lay at his door, and I put the food next to them. Coffee, butter, sausage, and so on. Und da habe ich das dann daneben gestellt, Kaffee und Butter und... Was und so weiter. I went to Rosenheim by train and got off. I didn't know where Gröning was, where the so-called Trabehoff that was written about was supposed to be, didn't know anything. I also didn't know whether Gröning was there. I didn't know if Gröning was there. From the Bahnhof And then leaving the station, we saw many people with canes or crutches going in a particular direction. Then I said to my comrade, hey, we've also got to go that way. Du, da müssen wir auch hingehen. If you stood on the balcony, you could see only people. It was crawling with people, unimaginable, so full, I tell you. It was hard to even get to the house at all. Gröning came through the door onto the balcony and first leaned against the balcony railing, leaning with both arms spread out wide. I will never forget that picture. For me, his build nicht mehr wegzudenken. We were really very still. You could have heard a pin drop, despite the many people. It was really unbelievable. As he stood there on the balcony, I had the impression that he was conscious of his mission. That was what gave him the strength and power. He said a lot. But for my ears, the most important thing was, you must believe in God, and you should trust me. Sollt ihr vertrauen. I am not here to hold big speeches, but to mediate help and healing. Don't think about your ailments. Observe your body and ask yourself, what is happening in my body? 
Und was ich gesehen habe, das waren die Rollstuhlfahrer. Und da ist also... What I saw were the people in wheelchairs. And there were quite a number. I don't remember anymore how many who actually followed Gröning's command and got up out of the wheelchairs and pushed the wheelchairs themselves. That's what I saw. Wir hatten damals eben die Aufgabe über eine Rosenheimer Zeitung da am Traberhof. At the time we were given the task by a Rosenheim newspaper to report about Mr. Gröning at the Traberhof in a completely neutral manner and to simply observe what happened there. And at some point in the course of those two days, instructions suddenly came that we were to report somewhat more skeptically, even negatively. Skeptischer respektive sogar negativ zu berichten. Das gute Ärzte war natürlich nicht glücklich bei dem Gedanken, so kann man es auch. Most of the doctors were naturally unhappy with the thought, you could say. Now there would be someone who simply looks at someone and says, you're healed. Then they said, he's either crazy or a liar. However, he was neither mad nor did he lie. Spannend noch gelogen. I experienced, it was in Wangerooge, that a teacher came who walked laboriously with a cane. Und auf der, kam auf Gröning zu, und Gröning sprach irgendwas zu. He went up to Gröning, and Gröning said something to him, taking his cane. And what astonished me back then was that he stretched his arm out, the right one, broke the cane over his arm and said to the teacher, you don't need that anymore. Then he just made a sweeping gesture with his hands over me and said to my mother, go home and don't worry, your child is well, and get it checked by your family doctor in two weeks. We went home and I slept through the whole night for the first time. And they said I also slept through to the next afternoon without ever moving my arms to scratch. So after two weeks, my mother took me to the family doctor, and he was able to confirm that it was gone. It was really gone. The next day, that teacher went back with the same train. I think he went to Aurich, I'm not sure. I saw the teacher sitting in the train two coaches away. I was delighted. I went up to him and asked, How are you doing now? Great, he said. It's all gone. He could walk well without back pain. Everything wonderful. The doctor came again the next day. He came every day with a nurse to have a look. The doctor made a place on the bed and sat down. Mrs. Grafarend, I have never before seen an illness disappear so suddenly. And that was the gist of what he said. And so we were overjoyed. And my mother <coughs> lived in good health for another 20 years.
He possessed no money at all, and often used the expression, money is the devil. He had a negative attitude toward money, and we were also strongly forbidden to accept money, not even for him. What they implied about him, that he had nothing against accepting payments, was in my opinion going too far because he really never accepted money. It was more those around him who were concerned with it, and it's a shame that he was blamed for things that are not supported by the facts. He himself was very modest and simple in his needs. And then I experienced something interesting. He suddenly showed us how much money he had. He dug into his pockets, sort of like this, and then he laid 37 cents on the table. That was all he had. Also, I never saw him take any money. Different people would lay money everywhere around here. And a few times he said, take back your money, but they didn't take their money back. Then Mr. Groening gathered up the money and put it in a woman's pocket. And it turned out later that the woman he had given the money to was a poor war widow. And she couldn't believe that something like that could still happen. For him, everything was simple. Do you understand? That was his greatness. His simplicity was his greatness. Whether he was aware of it or not aware of it, it was simply so. That was the beautiful thing about him. He never bragged or anything. No, I never heard that. Herr Gröning hat wieder eine anklage Schrift erwartet. Mr. Gröning expected an indictment again and wanted my husband to read it. My husband was a judge in the district court at Bad Kissingen at the time. He handed the indictment to my husband and said, I am neither a healing practitioner nor anything else. I give out no medication, nor do I ask for money. My husband read it and said, I don't understand why you're being indicted. Sagte, ich verstehe nicht, weshalb Sie angeklagt sind. As a layman, I had the feeling that this groaning was supposed to be convicted. How did I experience him in the courtroom? Completely calm. He was right. He didn't do anything wrong. And I was able to sense his serenity. I went up to him, and he only said he wanted to reassure me. Nothing gets eaten as hot as it's cooked. He was outraged, but then said very sadly, when a person does something good on this earth, he is punished. That's how it is here. So is this here. Als Bruno Gröning das letzte Mal in Klagenfurt war, 
When Bruno Gröning was in Klagenfurt the last time, I had the good fortune and the opportunity to sit next to him. And all at once, he said, he bent over a little. Oh, Maria, I have such pain. And I said, my God, why then? Then he said, no, it's already, it's already over with. But he looked very bad and was very grave and sad. Er hat gesagt, die Menschen schnüren wir die Gurgel zu. He said, those people are strangling me because I'm not allowed to heal anymore. And shortly before his death, he also said that he was burning up inside because he was no longer allowed to heal. Gesagt, er verbrennt innerlich, weil er nicht mehr heilen darf. The criminal case against Bruno Gröning is called. The offenses are unauthorized practice of healing. He said literally, the people don't realize at all how they are opposing me and what a blessing they have in me. And soon they won't have me any longer. Und jetzt haben sie mich bald nicht mehr. And then he said the important words, everyone has to die, I will also die. They will put my body into the earth, but I won't be dead. When someone calls me, I will be there for him and will continue to help. And when the time comes, everyone will achieve help and healing from within himself. Jeder aus sich selbst die Hilfe und Heilung erlangen.